Hi everyone, I'm Rincy and this is Rincy Reads. Today I'm going to be doing my February wrap up part one. I almost said March there. I know that a lot of people say January goes by really slowly, but really I feel like so much has already happened this month that it feels like it should already be March. So anyways, let's get on to the books that I've read so far this month. All right, first book I finished is Thomas Jefferson, The Art of Power by John Meacham. Those of you guys who have been following my channel for a little bit know that one of my like lifetime goals is to read a biography on every president, every US president. So I am currently on Thomas Jefferson, so I'm clearly not very far along on this project. I mean, I always feel like I need to give this disclaimer, but I've read biographies of various presidents like throughout the years, like I've picked up random ones over the years. And so this is like a project to read them in chronological order, which is a thing that I actually really like because it's really interesting to see sort of how the different writers, different biographers take a certain point of view in regards to different events. Like I'm on Tuffer Thomas Jefferson and like multiple times now I've heard about the founding of this country and the writing of the Declaration of Independence and you know Revolutionary War and things like that. And so seeing it all from different perspectives and seeing how different people look from different people's eyes is always really really interesting. This is like a super readable biography. I actually listened to it on audio and the audiobook is great as well because Edward Herman narrates it. He actually narrates a lot of like US history books so if you are into that sort of thing I highly recommend it. That's a separate tangent but yes it's a great audiobook and this is a pretty good biography like it's not the most detailed and extensive biography I probably could have picked out but I'm always looking for ones that are slightly more entertaining I would say than extensive and detailed because really I'm not like taking a test on these presidents. I don't need to know every single detail about their lives but I like that general overview. John Meacham isn't my favorite biographer but he is a good one and I'll probably be picking up his Andrew Jackson biography when I get to Andrew Jackson but next up I have James Madison. Yeah James Madison is next up on the list. I don't know which one I'm gonna pick up for that because from the cursory research I've done on James Madison biographies I have heard that they're like just okay. Um, I've like barely talked about this book by the way. <laughs> this is I mean if you're looking for a good Thomas Jefferson biography and you like biographies I mean this is a classic for a reason. My favorite part about this is that John Meacham is like not afraid to point out like the weird or unethical things about Thomas Jefferson but he does it in a way that's still really respectful which I mean I think it's just amusing to see how he works around those things like when he's talking about the writing of the Declaration of Independence and how Thomas Jefferson wrote Life, Liberty, and the Pursuit of Happiness or you know or how he talks about like justice for all men or liberty for all men. He There's like a note from John Meacham or not a note but like a comment that basically says but he was clearly just talking about white men or there's like a, I think it's in the introduction or the prologue where he talks about how Thomas Jefferson was kind of a conspiracy theorist and John Meacham says something along the lines of but it's not that shocking thinking of the time that Thomas Jefferson was alive that he was a conspiracy theorist but also a lot of people thought he was real crazy <laughs> like little like asides like that really amused me a lot when reading these types of biographies and I sort of like that John Meacham puts a little bit of personality into this biography. So yeah, I mean, I enjoyed it. It's a biography, so I feel like there's not a whole lot to say on it. Okay, next book that I have to talk about is Unmarriageable by Sonia Kamal. This is a brand new Pride and Prejudice retelling that just came out in January. And I really enjoyed this one. This one takes place in Pakistan and you are following the Benet family. So instead of the Bennett family and the main character who is playing the Lizzie Bennett character is named Alice. Alice is a teacher at a local school and she teaches English literature to a bunch of young girls who she hopes to inspire to do more than just like aspire for marriage but a lot of them end up just dropping out to get married. The Binet family has moved to this town after falling on some hard times. The Binet family ends up getting an invitation to the biggest wedding in their town. There they end up meeting Bungles or Fahara Bingla who ends up catching or who's ends up falling for Jenna and his friend Valentine Darcy is there with him as well at the wedding and he is obviously the Mr. Darcy character. So I feel like 
you know, I don't really need to give a significant plot synopsis for this book because again, it's a Pride and Prejudice retelling. So you can kind of guess how things are going to go. But I think that this one does a much better job of fleshing out the side stories and characters a lot more. One of the things that I thought was the absolutely best well done is the Charlotte character in this adaptation. In this adaptation, her name is Sherry and the way that everything sort of works for her is so good like so good I don't think I've seen a Charlotte character adapted this well in a really long time like I like what they did with her in the Lizzie Betta diaries uh, but this one I think I like even more than that so yeah I think that in and of itself redeemed this story for me now it does feel a little bit rote because like they are following the Pride and Prejudice storyline so it does have to hit like certain plot points and certain things just seem really obvious and some of the side like other sisters end up feeling more two-dimensional than I think is necessary. Specifically Mary comes off really poorly and it, it doesn't like play very well but I think that depending on the interpretation of Pride and Prejudice Mary in the original also comes off kind of that way as well. So yeah I, I think that if you're someone who enjoys Pride and Prejudice adaptations this is a really really good one. Honestly I like this one so much more than I like Pride. I think because it's longer and it's fleshed out a lot more there's enough stuff about like Pakistan and Pakistani culture that I really really enjoyed. Obviously I'm Indian so I feel felt like I could relate to a lot of what was happening in the story. Like there were multiple points while I was reading this book where I was like this is too real to me but I re also really appreciated it for that fact. So I gave Unmarriageable four to five stars. I really really enjoyed it. I think that if you are a fan of Pride and Prejudice and enjoy Pride and Prejudice retellings you're going to like this one a lot. All right the next book that I have finished is Elijah Cancel by August Thomas. This is a book I read for a Red or Dead episode that we'll be recording in the future. We're doing an episode on espionage books and so this is the one that I read. This one takes place in Turkey and you are following this character named Penny who is an intern at the U.S. Embassy in Turkey. There is a bomb that goes off at the their 4th of July celebration and the story starts with her waking up in the hospital and she's like reminded of the bomb going off and she's like one of the only survivors from the incident and apparently she was right next to this guy named Zach who also worked at the embassy who they think is a traitor or had something to do with the bomb and he has gone missing and so they are asking Penny about like what happened what can she remember things like that uh, but things seem really suspicious to her and she also doesn't believe that Zach would be a traitor and, and so the story just follows her as she tries to remember what exactly happened and tries to figure out what's going on but also she's dealing with like the embassy and the FBI and the CIA and all of these covert people and she doesn't really know who she can trust. So yeah I like this. I'm not a big like espionage person but this one isn't too espionage. -y. <laughs> That's not a real word. Like I don't really enjoy John Lecrae's novels or anything like that because they always feel really dry to me. This one is really action packed and plot driven. So if you're in the mood for something like that, I recommend this. There are certain points that feel really eye-rolly. Um, Penny is like super naive. Like I recognize that she's in college and she's an intern so she's probably like 20, 21. But she seems real naive about the way the world works but maybe that's just me being someone in her 30s who has seen things happen in the world at this point but she seems like super trusting of people and like super gung-ho about certain things that I'm like I feel like you should be slightly more skeptical about things but it works for the sake of the story. This one does sort of wrap up as like a I don't want to say a happily ever after but the ending is really really neat. That's a thing as well that I, I think is fine but it's not like my favorite thing. I like when there's slightly more complexity and gray to characters and stories and things like that. So I think that if you're someone who just wants like a straightforward mystery spy book that's fun and this, like something that's good for a vacation or a beach read or where you don't have to think a whole lot, I think this is a good book. That seems really insulting but I mean sometimes you just want those like action-packed plot driven stories and this is a book that like I was compelled by like I didn't hate reading this uh, but it's just very shallow in terms of character development and things like that so yeah I gave it a three out of five stars it's all right it's not terrible but nothing mind-blowing all right and the final book that I have to talk about in this video is Bitter Orange by Claire Fuller this is 
a relatively new release when it came out, October of last year, and I was sent this copy by Tin House. Claire Fuller wrote the short story collection Swimming Lessons that came out a couple of years ago, and there was some like mixed reaction to that. Uh, this is like a completely different book. This is like literary suspense is probably the best way to describe it. So in this story you are following this character named Francis who is living in the attic of this house in England in like the late 1960s and there are some like tenants who are moving into the downstairs area of the house named Kara and Peter and she becomes a little bit obsessed with them. They end up forming a friendship altogether but then she realizes that not everything is quite okay between this couple and she realizes that the stories that Kara is telling her is not quite adding up. And so this story is told from the perspective of Frances basically like looking back on her life and telling the story of this summer. And you know that like something has happened but you're not really sure quite what is going on. So it has that sort of like I said literary suspense feeling to it. Uh, it, it gave me like Daphne du Maurier vibes but it's not quite up to Daphne du Maurier level very few books are. But I think if you want something like really atmospheric a good slow burn of a book then I think that this would be an interesting one to pick up. It wasn't like a complete surprise where this story was going but there were little moments here and there that did surprise me. The way it wrapped up all together in the end wasn't super shocking but again like there were little twists in the plot where I was like oh I didn't see that one coming. Claire Fuller does a good job of creating that uneasiness and that darkness over everything that's going on here which I always think is really impressive when writers are able to do that. This is another book where I didn't necessarily love it but I was intrigued and I wanted to see how it was all going to turn out. So this one is probably like a three and a half stars for me. It's not a perfect book by any means but it is good if you are in the mood for one of those atmospheric slow burn books. So that is everything that I have for this video. I feel like I haven't read that much this month so far even though I did just talk about four books but I'm in the middle of two books that I am super loving and I can't wait to talk to you about those next time which will be in two weeks. <laughs> I don't know why there was so much of a pause there. So yeah, let me know down in the comments below if you read any of these books and what your opinions were on them or if you have any questions about any of the books that I talked about here, feel free to leave that down in the comment section as well. So yeah, that's all I have for now and thanks for watching. Yeah.